So Garrett Cole is filthy. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us your first listen. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias, alongside my producer, Steve Granado. Steve, what do we have for everyone today? Ooh, what do we have? We got good stuff. Uh, well, okay, maybe not all good stuff. Yankees rained out on Thursday. We already know that, uh, the opening game in the Baltimore series. We will preview that series um, briefly in our last segment. I also wanted to kind of chat here since we're like, oh, weekend of the season where do the yankees rank amongst the league uh about a weekend so we're going to talk about that in our second segment but like you said garrett cole filthy and he did it again he did it again um i will admit i was slightly worried when i saw the weather i thought to myself this is a built-in excuse if he doesn't do well he can always say that he couldn't grip the ball it was too damp it was too this and he looked fantastic i mean he had a couple of blips but other than that i mean these two starts, they're the kind of starts you want from Garrett Cole, and especially against teams that aren't that great. The Phillies aren't a bad team. They just happen to have injuries, so they're not playing up to the level that you expect the Phillies to play. But these are the types of games that Garrett Cole needs to pitch, and so far, so good for his first two starts. Yeah, I mean, he handled Trey Turner. That's, <laughs> I mean, we just saw what he did in the World Baseball Classic. Um, Trey ain't no, you know, snob, and, and he... You know, he's facing a, a legit lineup. Um, so, yeah, I mean, six in the third, uh, three hits, gave up an earned run, at least charged with one. Loisica led an inherited run score, three walks. That was probably the knock, but eight strikeouts for, for Cole again. And uh, the slider shape is looking really nice. The fastball up in the zone is still working. Um, how about this, Stacey? Yeah. So first two games, 12 and a third innings of work, one earned, six hits, five walks, 19 strikeouts. This is the second best start to a season in Garrett Cole's career. 2018 with the Houston Astros, he went 14 innings, seven innings in first each uh, of his first two starts with only one earned run on a solo shot. He struck out 22 batters and walked only three. Ridiculous first two games of the season. Yeah. Um, but this is just an inch behind that. He, he is on a great start to the year. Yeah, I'm enjoying every second of it. And it's... It's fun to watch Cole these first two games because there were a couple of times last season where you kind of were not dreading Cole starts, but you were kind of slightly worried about them just because he would occasionally have a bad inning or some sort of weird thing would happen to him, plus the home runs. Um, and yeah, it's just it's been fun to watch him. I don't know. You know, uh, you had mentioned this, that you didn't realize he had cut his hair and I always joke about that sort of thing because, you know, a lot of people joke about that thing. Baseball players are very superstitious. That's why you see some guys walking around with these really long beards and, and you know, ratty hair like Brandon Marsh on the Phillies because they don't want to ruin what they look like. And I was afraid when Cole came into spring training with his hair cut, I was like, I don't know if this is going to be a good thing for him. And so far, so good. So maybe he should keep his hair short because it's, yeah, it's working it's the so short hard. Hair. It's the short hair. It's the short <laughs> hair. Uh, obviously, title of this, we're talking about already already this is i mean this is on my mind already i mean he is pitching like remember at the start of the season before i think it was in our opening day preview i said garrett cole is an ace of aces mm -hmm. he is pitching like an ace of aces right now um yeah i mean you can say it's too early and yeah it is too early it's two right. starts of what's supposed to be around 30 to 35 but i mean this is super encouraging and oh yeah and it's not like I mean, we did a whole episode on Garrett Cole before the season even started, and we were talking about how he is one of the most underrated starters and underrated aces in all of baseball because of how consistently good he has been. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's 12 and a third innings. Don't go nuts here. Yeah. But it's when when you look at the track record, and now you can see – if he keeps that kind of pace up, which he typically does, mm. like you're looking at at Cy Young contention at this pace. Oh yeah. If not yeah. Cy Young winner, like that's 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 not even just contention. If you go at this pace, you're striking 19 guys prior to 13 innings. I mean, dude, like what what do you want from him? Yeah. The amazing thing about Garrett Cole is, you know, he led the league in strikeouts last year with 257. He broke the Yankees record. 
And that was still 70 fewer than he had in his best season with Houston. He had like 328 strikeouts, which is an insane amount of strikeouts to even think of anyone throwing yeah. in a season. He's he's yeah. unbelievable. And he's that type of pitcher. And we talked about it in the episode where we previewed him and how consistent he is. And when he has one of those strange outings where he gives up, you know, maybe like five runs on six hits, he's also striking out still he's striking out 10 guys at the same time yeah. it's just he's yeah the the swing and miss ability of garrett cole is not only uh impressive but it is up again and i think what was interesting about wednesday's start is he wasn't generating the swings and misses early but second third time through the order now he's starting to generate more swings and misses which is the direct opposite of how it normally works. <laughs> so he got better as time went on. You think yeah. of pitchers that have that title attached, attached to them. It's guys like Max Scherzer and, and Justin Verlander, like these Hall of Fame aces that have that attached to them. I mean, Garrett Cole, I mean, he was ranked number two starter in all of baseball prior to the season for a reason. Yeah. He leads the league in strikeouts. He's only one ahead of Dylan Cease right now. But, I mean, th this is the year in my head for Garrett Cole where I'm going like, I th not that he hasn't put it together, but I feel like he can really take it to another level this season. Yeah. And he said, you know, we spoke about this also on his episode, that he this is his first this was his first normal spring training as a Yankee starter because he had two seasons that were – marred by COVID, you know, 2020, 2021, because 2021 was still a strange season. Things weren't right. Then you had the lockout. And 2023 was the first time that he reported to camp in Tampa. Everything was normal. Everything was the way it was supposed to be. And maybe that has something to do with why he's pitching uh, the way you expect him to pitch. Yeah. And he just looks fired up. He looks in total control. He looks like how he's supposed to look. Um, there are going to be a bad couple of starts like there's, sure. that's going to happen. Uh, the long ball hasn't tagged him yet. Uh, it likely will. Right. But I think with that fastball up in the zone, man, I think that is just such a recipe for success. It's so hard to hit that ball out. If he keeps firing that, um, you know, that's it's great. He's going to get those swings and misses and uh, he's gotten them so far. Again, he ramped it up on Wednesday and it's it's super encouraging. He's looking great. Yep. Uh, other guys looking great. Glaber Torres is doing it again. <laughs> Three for four, Stacy. This guy is forcing himself in the lineup still. Oh, yeah. And um, still, he's just, yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I actually laughed today at his performance just because we've been talking about him the past couple of days. And it's just like, yeah, he's basically making it so they can't play anyone else at second yeah. base. <laughs> he's really the only one doing that. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, eight for his first 19, two home runs, six runs driven in. He scored five times. You know, he just, yeah, he's looking really good. And, um, you know, there's some instances where he's uh, swinging at the first pitch, but it's not as often. He's he's being more selective at the plate with all the walks that he's had. He's had a bunch of walks. Even, you know, the beat writers mentioned it in the press conference with Aaron Boone. And Boone made it a point to talk about how um, selective he's being at the plate and all the walks that he's had so far in this small sample size of games. So he's just all around doing really well. Yeah. Very impressive. And I got to imagine until he stops being impressive and maybe a little bit after that, he's <laughs> going to keep starting. He's going to keep playing. And I think that's going to be the way to go uh, moving forward. Good bounce back, by the way, we didn't even mention that we were worried uh, after that loss on Tuesday night, maybe the Yankees wouldn't be able to bounce back, but Hey, Garrett Cole did what Garrett Cole needs to do. Glaber did what Glaber does. Um, one thing of note before we finish up this last, uh, this first segment, rather, um, Josh Donaldson did exit the game with an apparent injury. It looks like he came up lame at first base with a little bit of a hamstring problem, um, but it doesn't seem to be too bad here. This is coming from Brendan Cuddy. Uh, Boone on Josh Donaldson's injury, quote, I don't think it's too severe. Um, Donaldson said, it's a little sore. This is coming from Brian Hoke. Uh, it's a little sore. I think we're just kind of trying to see how it responds tomorrow and go for there tomorrow being when you're listening to this episode on Thursday during the rain out when they head down to Baltimore. But um, yeah, so our first uh, in season injury bug has bitten. Right. Um, yeah. They just have to be careful with him because um, you know, he's older, no offense, but he's older. He has a history of leg issues with him. It was always his calf that had the issue. Um, but yeah, no, he, I, 
they're just going to err on the side of caution. And, you know, IKF made a nifty play at third, and he's better at third than he is at short. And if they can have him play at third in Donaldson's place, you know, they have all these guys they can plug in, and he's one of them. So yeah, they're okay if they lose. play third, too. Right. But they, they're fine if they lose Don- Donaldson. And he's not one of the scary guys to lose in the lineup. No offense to Josh Donaldson, but it's true. Yeah, and uh, of course, as I mentioned, Oswald can play their IKF, former Gold Glover, um, over at third base. So they'll be fine defensively. There's no issues there. Um, but you just hope that uh, it's a speedy recovery. Um, you know that we're rooting for Josh Donaldson, just uh, hoping he's able to figure it out this season. But uh, yeah, an, an injury this this early is a, a little tough, but uh, you know these things kind of happen. Um, but anyway, that's going to do it for our first segment. When we come back... Where do the Yankees rank among the rest of Major League Baseball one week into the season? You're going to want to find out. So stick around. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And this episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar March Madness is over, and my beloved cookie dough chunk puff lost to salted caramel bar, which lost in the championship round to the brownie batter bar. If you want to try any of those bars or built puffs, you can go to built.com or you can head to your local Sam's club or Walmart. And why should you pick built bar? They're healthy for you. Built is the best protein bar ever. Seriously. They're so amazing. You won't know they're good for you. And what makes built bars and puffs so good. They're all high in protein, low in sugar and covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right. Real chocolate. So again, if you want to try built, you can go to built.com and have them sent to your door, or you can go to your local Walmart or Sam's club and you can pick up a box or two. So how are the Yankees doing compared to the rest of Major League Baseball? So far, they're four and two, which is great. You know, it's good. Um, They're two games in back of Tampa who won't lose. Uh, They swept the Tigers and they swept. Who'd they play? Wait, who'd they play? Now I can't remember who they played. Oh, well, whoever they played, they swept them. Yeah. (laughs) They're perfect six and oh, I got you. They were two not great teams. And, you know, in order to be a good team, you need to beat the bad teams. And that's what Tampa's doing. And, you know, so far the Yankees are doing, they had two kind of frustrating losses there, one against the Giants and one against the Phillies. And, you know, Tampa's going to calm down. They're not going to be undefeated all season. So yeah, that's not how anything works ever. Uh, They're playing the nationals That's it in in DC. Yes. Okay. Good old phone. Uh, Yeah. Four and two record. Uh, I looked up and these numbers will probably be out of date by the time you're watching this because we're recording midday on Wednesday. Uh, Late late your time midday my time Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah home runs tied for second uh they have 11 home runs they're tied with baltimore weirdly enough good start to the year for baltimore offensively um well they were in Fenway where the balls are flying out for some reason for the first three games so yes that well they i think they had like one big game in (laughs) boston so that's helping um leading the league by the way the dodgers which is kind of surprising and uh tampa they both have 13 this one was a little strange to me Second or tied for second in stolen bases, Stacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baltimore leads Major League Baseball right now all with 11. Uh, the D backs, the Guardians, and the Yankees have nine. That are you surprised by that? I'm a little surprised by that. Yeah, that's Fulpe and uh, Glaber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, um, they're kind of middle pack in a lot of like your stereotypical run of the mill stats run scored Hmm. on base slugging batting average all that stuff so they're kind of middle pack there but obviously four wins in six games uh who cares um right you you figure you figure out a way to win uh on the pitching front six lowest era at 2.33 um they had the 10th fewest hits allowed with 45 
Um, runs allowed. They are tied for third fewest. 14 are tied with the Atlanta Braves. Minnesota leads all of baseball right now with 11, so they're not that far off. It's just three runs. Um, mm-hmm. And they are one strikeout ahead in the uh, most, or sorry, two strikeouts ahead of the most strikeouts in Major League Baseball with 72. Garrett and Cole who, has 19 I, of those. I was just going <laughs> to say, I'm like, and who helped them do that? Garrett Cole. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, they are up there. Um, the power rankings, I imagine, will be coming out here shortly. I know there was one I saw from Bleacher Report had the Yankees in the top five. Mm-hmm. Um, had my Angels at six, by the way. Uh, but I know that the uh, those rankings, they've been doing them fairly consistently, like the Major League Baseball ones have been put out recently. Um, so I imagine the Yankees will be be up there per usual. And I think that um, save save that one game on Tuesday, everything – Looks pretty darn good. I mean, I, I I have no real complaints about yeah. this Yankees roster and the way they've been playing. Yeah, you know, um, Tuesday was frustrating, uh, and Saturday was frustrating, but that was more on the pitching side. They scored five runs. Like, usually, if a team scores five runs, you'd expect them to win, maybe. Um, so the offense, you know, they were fine then. This is what you want from a team. You want them to win series, and they've won the first two series. That's always what you look for i mean sure would you like a sweep against bad teams sure but it doesn't happen that way all the time and as long as they're consistent and they keep winning series and staying relatively healthy they should be fine yeah i mean it's also hard to call philadelphia a bad team like that's, no, no no right that's like that's i said not, yeah. no like i said in the first in the first um segment they're not bad they're just not full strength so they're not playing to not their playing to their potential right now yes right um, uh, and the also Giants it's a weekend that, right yeah. no they, they're they, not expected but, to be that good yeah but. they i mean they i think this is how i always think of it now i'll, I'll leave this segment with this thought <laughs> these are all still major league baseball players oh sure of course <laughs> like, like of course I, I know there are good teams and bad teams and great teams and yeah of course like there's more talent level and better roster construction sure that's that's obvious. But still at the end of the day, these are still the best players in the world. Like just because on a regular basis these players don't contribute or the team doesn't win on a consistent basis, they're still all way better than us right. uh, at pretty much everything ever. So, uh, yeah, I, I always try to take that. Uh, there was a, a quote from a minor leaguer. I, I blank on his name. Uh, a couple of years ago, the difference between minor league baseball players and major league baseball players is consistency. Mm-hmm. The talent level is there for all of them. It's just how who can do it every single day. Um, and that's not just true between major and minor, but major and major, which teams are very good and which teams are OK. Well, here's one quick thing before we go to segment three. The Detroit Tigers were swept by the Rays in Tampa opening weekend. They go into Minute Maid Park and they win the first two games against the Astros. Who would have expected it? Because <laughs> uh, that's how baseball yeah. is, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> they these guys win. are all good. They're yeah. all good. Yeah. I don't care what you say, they're all good. Um, coming up next, uh, stick around. We got a preview of this next series with the Baltimore Orioles. We have a new sponsor called So Rare. So Rare is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from all 30 Major League Baseball teams. And unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, So Rare managers own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against opponents to win epic rewards. And win or lose, you still own your cards, so there's no cost to play. Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez are brand ambassadors, and they will engage with the So Rare community throughout the season at events, which is pretty cool. The game weeks happen twice weekly and span a three to four day cycle. And at the end of the week, managers who rank at the top of their leaderboards will win a variety of rewards from So Rare. So head to SoRare.com slash locked on. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E dot com to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash locked on to start playing today.
Back here for our final segment of the day. Just a reminder, the Yankees game versus the Orioles on Thursday has already been postponed to Friday. Three Eastern on Friday. Three Eastern. Very strange. Very strange. Uh, when was the last time you had a Friday game start at 3 o'clock? Um, anyway, Clark Schmidt set to go round two. Stacy, your preview. I wouldn't say preview. You. What do you anticipate? At a Clark Schmidt second go around again, Baltimore's offense looking pretty good to start the year. Yeah, I'm a little worried about this. I was surprised that Boone was so, well, actually, am I surprised that Boone was so, not gung-ho, but kind of like, you know, Clark's going on Friday. He said that in the post game on Wednesday, um, you know, because Boone likes to stick to a routine and he doesn't want to mess things up with the pitchers. So I understand why he'd want Clark Schmidt to be the number two, even with this delay. I am a little worried, yes, because I didn't realize uh, Baltimore's offense was still doing things after leaving Fenway where the balls were flying out. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little worried about this. Um, I'm, you know. I'm high on the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. I, I think oh. their, their system is super, super strong. Grayson Rodriguez just got called up um, and made his debut. Um, I, I'm very excited for a second year out of Adley Rushman. So, like, there's a lot of guys um, on this Baltimore squad, a lot of young talent. So, I wouldn't sleep on the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, they've done a they did a really good job at AAA last year and did a pretty good job at AA as well. So um, keep your eye on them. Uh, speaking of minor league baseball, by the way, I wanted to bring this up. Um, Davey Garcia and Matt Crook, of course, AAA season just started over the weekend. They're a couple of games into the year. Davey and Crook are pitching out of the bullpen hmm. to start the season. Um, both of which have already made two relief appearances. So we were talking about what the Yankees might end up doing to try and bring in a left-handed reliever. It looks like Matt Crook might be primed to be the guy that they want to bring up potentially, but he's, he's pitching out of the pen right now. And so is Davey. Yeah. Which means they wouldn't have to trade Glaber for a left-handed reliever. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. I, I mean, I still think a, a, it could be a closer or any combination of a reliever and a closer there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just there are internal options. Um, and the rest of the minor leagues start today, by the way, as you're listening to this on Thursday, um, we have minor league previews for the um, for the Hudson Valley Renegades and the Somerset Patriots. Of course, we did a Rail Riders one, too. It's not too late to check those out. They're linked in the episode description. So definitely check those out. Um, but yeah, minor league baseball full swing now ready to go. So it's exciting. We'll be doing uh, Miners Mondays, by the way, moving forward now since minor league baseball is starting. So every Monday, our third segment or second segment uh, will be uh, dedicated to what happened in the Yankees minor league system that week. So should be fun. Keep you guys uh, informed of what's going down with the young Yanks. Yeah. Uh, one thing before we go, speaking of closing, on Wednesday, Clark, uh, Clark Schmidt, no, Clay Holmes, the other CL first name, he looked better. He looked a lot better. He um, Now I can't remember who he struck out to end the game, but it was a really nasty pitch that tricked the batter. And he looked, you know, because I was worried, you know, with the two-run lead, I was thinking, ooh, Clay Holmes. And no, he looked good. So, you know, I think these guys know that it's a competition because we keep talking about how we don't know who the actual closer is going to be. And just like Glaber playing with a chip on his shoulder, I feel like these guys, you know, Jimmy Cordero the other day and Clay Holmes, um, you know, Jonathan Luizaga, but I feel like they kind of know what's going on and they're, they're auditioning or, you know, doing their self tapes to, uh, <laughs> to be the closer. We'll see how That's it goes. That's the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The self tapes, the self tape auditions are, are definitely in full swing. Um, thanks for checking us out here today for your second listen, check out lockdown fantasy baseball. You can win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy strategies. You can find it wherever you listen to pods. And of course on YouTube too, part of the lockdown podcast network, your team every day. I'm Steve Granado. And I'm Stacey Gotsoulias and we'll see you tomorrow.